I would like to take you to a quick journey across the boundaries of Bebel, starting with a central question that will be the leading team of this short talk. Syntax has been recognized as being the specific property of old and only human languages. Syntax is nothing but the capacity to generate infinite sentences by assembling a finite set of words. And the question is the following. Why aren't all conceivable rules realized in human languages? We can actually imagine as many kinds of rules as we want, but the linguistics of the 20th century has shown us that only a subset of the possible rules are realized in the languages of the world. And before starting, I would like to highlight a very crucial premise, which is refers to linguistics, but it could actually be referred to the entire domain of scientific inquiry. And the premise is the following. To understand what is possible, it is sometimes useful to explain what is impossible. Let's keep this in the back of our mind throughout this, our short journey. First of all, I would like to highlight with a short, simple case study, one of the core aspects as probably the core aspects of all and only human languages. In natural languages, words are grouped in boxes, so to speak, which can be potentially infinite. Let me give you one short, simple example. If I take Mary, just a proper name, that Mary can be embedded in a box. And you could say the uncles of Mary. The big box is the uncles and Mary's inside. And that can be done infinitely. So you could say the friends of the uncles of Mary or the fathers of the friends of the uncle of Mary and so on and so forth. Now, why is this crucial? Because of the following fact. Let me give you a simple case study. Suppose I have a noun and a verb and they're both singular. I have Mary and the verb to run. How do they match? They go like Mary runs. But now the following thing, it's like a trick, a magic. I will show you that I can make Mary disappear. If I say the friends of Mary, as you see here, Mary doesn't count for the verb. What counts for the verbs is only the larger box. You can only say the friends of Mary run. You cannot say the friends of Mary runs as before. Interestingly enough, this process where Mary becomes invisible, it's inside a box, can be extended to all possible human rules. In other words, syntactic rules ignore linear order or flat rules. They only see boxes. If this is true, and this is true, we can actually reformulate the central question in a more sophisticated way. Let's go back to the central question. Remember, why aren't all conceivable rules realized in language of the world? And the following one can be formulated. Why don't human languages exploit linear order of words? Are they excluded by an arbitrary cultural convention or by brain structure? How can we prove that? Well, there is a way. If they are excluded by brain structure, then there must exist impossible languages, namely languages which are not recognized by our brain. And this is exactly what I did with two different groups of scientists with two different experiments. The first one, I taught a monolingual German speaker, two very different languages, a micro-Italian and a micro-Japanese, containing both possible and impossible rules, that is, flat rules. And in the second one, to exclude that meaning could guide interpretation, we also designed languages based on pseudo-words, such as the gulk, gamf, the brals, for Italian speakers that would turn out to be il gulco gianigeva le brale, no meaning at all, but it sounds like a sentence. And here's the example. We adopted the so-called functional resonance machine to highlight the blood activity of a portion of the brain. We choose Broca's area, which is one of the hub in the brain for language calculation and production and perception. And here is the experiment. First, we tested the accuracy with which this speaker were able to learn possible and impossible rules. And we matched it with blood flow in Broca's area. And the result were the following, very neat. First, with possible rules, it happened what we thought could happen. Namely, the better they were in the accuracy, the more blood was called in Broca's era so that it revealed the Broca's era recognized those kind of rules and was able to be activated. With the impossible rules, the opposite happened. And this is the neat result. Impossible rules turn out to be recognized extensively by the brain. 
What are the consequences, the results of this experiment? First, the selective activation of different circuits for the two different types of languages, possible versus impossible, shows that the existence of impossible language cannot be the result of an arbitrary cultural convention. In other words, it is as if languages were the product of the brain with no specific instruction. We could actually capture this fact by reverting a very traditional way of looking at the relationship between brain, body, and languages and come up with the following sentence, flash, became words. What are the consequences of this way of looking at thing? Well, first of all, the set of old principles limiting human languages constitute the STEM mind of infants. Second, the real revolution here started by Noam Chomsky is to think that language acquisition, it's not a constructed process from zero, but a selection among all possible forms. And eventually there are no languages better than others. The last one has a tremendous impact on the so-called linguistic racism, which was the origin of many of the important uh, racist theories of the 20th century. Um, before concluding, let me tell you one surprising thing. Dante already knew about the last thing you see here. In his De Vulgari Eloquentia, he was very explicit about the fact that there are no better languages. And he said so by adopting the idea that in a very large city as Pietramala, which is in fact a very, very tiny a uh, small town in the Italian Apennine, he said the following thing. Look how strong his position is. Pietramala is a great city indeed, the home of the greater part of the children of Adam. For whoever is guided by such an obscene reasoning as to think that the place of his birth is the most delightful spot under the sun, may also believe that his own language, his mother tongue, that is, is preeminent among all others. This is really the result of uh, a, a deep reflection and nowadays is supported by neuroscientific results. If you are interested in this kind of thing, you can actually see them analyzed in this small book, but I would like to adopt Umberto Eco's uh, original suggestion that whereof one cannot theorize, thereof one must narrate. And there is another way of looking at impossible languages with a novel and a thriller. And I'll leave you like this, thanking you for your attention.